I'm all you moonshiners if you want to hear about the kind of bulls that they serve around here. Welcome back. May I'm George. Yep, this is Ball and Hops. This is the extension video of the mashing our corn to make a corn liquor. Oh, uh, wow, we've done absolutely nothing for oh, the past couple of hours. I've allowed that to set in here. Now, just as a quick review, you know, I brought it up to like 190 degrees. I actually got a little higher than that, but that's all right. Uh, it wasn't doing anything critical at that point except for the gelatinization process. Yes, we were taking that really hard corn uh, that was full of starch uh, and we're actually just soaking it and softening it up so that we can get at those starches. Uh, so I wanted to show you what I have, where we're at, and then kind of how do you test that? Yeah, there's a way to test to make sure you, you're kind of at the stage that you want it to be at. And that's why we're back here again now. And then after that, what we'll do is we'll, yep, we're going to add our uh, malted barley uh, and then we're going to allow that to set for an extended period of time like about 90 minutes you know maybe 60 but we'll see because we've got a way to test that and we'll show that to you as well uh, you're all familiar with it. it's the iodine test iodine starch test so the first thing I want to show you is I want to show you what the corn looks like now as opposed to if you recall what it looked like before in the plastic bag. Let's get a closer look. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I did add a little bit more water, probably about almost a gallon. Um, and the reason I did that was, you see how full it is now. Uh, what I want to do is get my bed prepared for when I add the uh, malted barley. But up to this point, look, I told you that it would be like a porridge. Look at that, and then you can reach and you can touch it and feel it. Now, this, this is still about 180 degrees, so it's still hot. But it's a mushy corn now, and that corn is just about ready uh, for me to add. Well, it is ready. I just, just loving it. Wasn't that amazing? The corn is ready. Okay, now we're going to test, we're going to take two different tests. We're going to, we're going to test the water and then we're going to actually test the corn itself because I like, I like looking at the corn too and we'll do that later as well but because it really is, it's an eye opener. It kind of gives you an indication of what's going on. We're going to test for starch content and starch itself. Now the water itself uh, was starchless when we started and now we've done all this so we're going to get some of this water out of here. I'm just going to get a ladle full. You know, I got this spoon, this heaping spoon, and then I'm going to get some uh, iodine. I've got my iodine tincture here, and I've got my eyedropper. Now, watch what happens when I drop um, a drop of this iodine. You notice that big black blob? Now, what that is is the iodine attaching itself to all those starch molecules, and you can shake it. And I go shake it a little bit, but it'll primarily it globs itself. Now, if there were if there was no starch in that, that would dissipate and go away, but it's not. So that tells me that this water is full of starch. So now let's test the corn. I just made a mess. We only need a few. I just want to pull this out so I can show you. Now this is the, let me, let me just go ahead and drain all that water off of those. Now watch what happens when I drop it onto the corn itself. You notice how dark it turns black. And that's because that corn is loaded with starch. What we want to have happen is we want that to not turn that black color. We would prefer it to dissipate uh, all the way or to a, a brownish hue. Uh, and I'll tell you what, uh, just to prove to you that we're loaded with starch, we're going to just take some clear water 
and drop some iodine in that. You'll see the difference in what it actually does. Now this is just a ladle full of water. Nothing special. And if we drop a drop of iodine in that, you'll notice that it's, there's a brown color to it. It's got a brownish hue and it dissipates. So you shake it a little bit and it just dissipates. And no matter how much you drop in there, I don't get anything black. It just dissipates. So that proves the absence of starch, and which is exactly what we're looking for. So what we've done is we've actually gelatinized all of this corn, and now we're just going to add our barley when we get to the right temperature. Because right now we're still at about 190 degree, 187 degrees or so, because this thing is really well insulated. Uh, I've got to leave it set here for, I'll leave the top off and let it set here and let all that energy escape until I get down to what? You know, 162 is my top end, but I'll drop in my malted barley at about oh, 165, 166, because I know what's going to happen. As soon as I drop in, anytime you add more volume, of course, your, your temperature is going to drop a few degrees. So I can wait till I get to 162 because I've got that wide breadth, that wide range anyway. All right? And that's what we're going to do. So we'll be back for however long this takes to cool down. Or right, there are some options. Oh, you better believe it. Yes, we could use a wart chiller. You know, the coil of copper. You stick down in there and you run water through it. Yeah, we could do that. I could put a fan on it and blow on it. There's, you know, if, if I had a large enough walk-in cooler, I could set that in there and cool it down. It doesn't really matter at that point. I just, I need it to cool down because anything above 162 is going to inoculate that uh, amylase, and I don't want that to happen. So no. we've been at this for, oh, about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. You can still see a little steam coming off of here, so it's still cooling down. Figured this would be a good time to check my starch conversion. So how do we do that? Oh, yeah, you just pull a little bit out and throw some iodine in it and give it a check. Let me grab some. Now this is the water I just took from that, and now watch what happens when I put a drop of iodine on here. Let's give that a try. You'll notice that, and if I shake it just a little bit, you'll see how it dissipates. Nothing black. No black at all. So I've got full starch conversion in the liquid at least. Now it's time to check, of course, let's check some of the corn. Here we are. Now we've got some corn and we've got some barley in there. And we'll give that a check. I don't have that real dark tar black look, but I've got some in there, so that means there's still some starches left in there that are breaking down. So I'm going to leave that alone, and uh, that'll bring us to a close for that. I mean, that's, I'm just going to allow that to set for another hour or so, um, and then all you have to do is just let it cool that kind of brings us to the end I'm just gonna let that set for another 30 minutes to an hour or so and let the remainder of that corn convert um, I'm really happy with that so far uh, this, you see how again I don't understand why someone wants to make this process so complicated because it's not complicated uh, if you just follow those simple steps and again it how you get there is totally up to you, but uh, there's a process that you follow, and we convert those starches into fermentable sugars, and we're ready to go. Now, this will cool down overnight. I'll let this sit here. I won't, I'll come back out tomorrow and work on the rest of it. And we'll transfer this into our fermenter. Uh, we'll top it off. We'll put some yeast in it. We'll check the uh, initial gravity. Uh, because we're looking for certain numbers and we'll get to that as well. So because we're taking this step by step It's it's not that difficult, and uh, I just hope you gain something from this. Uh, I'm really happy with that Happy distilling